Welcome to KP Classes. My name is Rupu Raju. Uh, in today's live section, we'll be discussing about a geochemistry topic related to rubidium strontium dating method and the isochrome technique that we use to calculate the age of the rock sample. So, when it comes to the rubidium strontium dating method, uh, we know that uh, this is a very one of the very important uh, dating system. Uh, the when it comes to the term rubidium. Rubidium is an alkali element. Rubidium is an alkali metal. Alkali metal. And when it comes to the atomic number, atomic number of rubidium is 37. It has different uh, isotopes, 87 rubidium, 85 rubidium. All these are different types of isotopes of uh, rubidium. But when it comes to the particular rubidium, that is 87, rubidium 37, this is a radioactive isotope of rubidium, which is unstable isotope or radioactive isotope of rubidium. And this rubidium undergo a beta minus decay and form a strontium nucleus. And strontium with an atomic number 38 and mass number 87 will be forming by a Beta minus decay. This is the radioactive decay that happens in the uh, that happens uh, in this particular process. Rubidium undergo decay. Rubidium 87, 87 rubidium, which is a radioactive isotope, undergo decay and forms a 30, 87 strontium. Atomic number of strontium is uh, 838. So the decay happening over here is a beta minus decay. So rubidium and strontium both of them have almost same valency but when it comes to the radius rubidium is much more larger in radius than the strontium so uh, ionic radius of both are comparatively similar but when it comes to the uh, charge and the, all those things are different like, so we know about the Goldschmidt uh, substitution rule when it comes to do two different there is a camouflage substitution rule admission and capture rules so not going into those terms now so rubidium is comparatively more incompatible incompatible 
than strontium. Incompatibility of rubidium is much higher than that of strontium. Then, um, when it comes to the properties of rubidium as an element, rubidium has a very similar uh, radius with the potassium. Uh, hence, rubidium substitutes potassium in K feldspars. Whereas, strontium, strontium is an alkali earth metal. is an alkali earth metal with atomic number 38 uh, alkali earth metal uh, it is uh, uh, having an it, it is uh, very similar to calcium as an element hence it substitutes uh, cal calcium in calcium rich minerals like plagioclase apatite aragonite etc etc so rubidium substitutes potassium in kfls for strontium substitutes calcium in calcium rich minerals uh, and I have discussed about the inco incompatibility. Rubidium is compatibly incompatible than strontium. Now we know uh, uh, this is the radioactive decay equation. If I write the total number of total D is equal to number of total that was present in the initial tank plus number of parent that is present at tank T in, into E raised to decay constant lambda uh, T is the time minus 1. This is the equation for calculating the uh, total number of water present in the sample. So, if I follow this particular equation, the uh, 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio is equal to total number of uh, strontium isotope ratio will be equal to 87 strontium by 86 strontium at the initial time plus 87 rubidium divided by 86 strontium at time t into e raised to lambda t minus 1. This is the equation for calculating the, this is the dating equation or this is the isochrone equation for this equation is called as the isochrone equation of rubidium strontium system. Isochrone equation for rubidium strontium system. Uh, the half life of uh, rubidium is t half. We know what is half life means the amount of time required to divide the complete sample by half. That is half life. Half life of rubidium uh, strontium system rubidium is 48.8 into 10 raised to 9 years or 48. Uh, be, uh, for uh, this is the half life and when it comes to the lambda value that is 1.42 into 10 raised to minus 11 per year okay now let's come back to the isochrome equation of rubidium strontium system so with the help of this particular equation equation number one we'll be calculating the age if i know uh, the, the strontium ratio present in my sample, total number of strontium ratio present in my sample at time t, the initial value, initial strontium ratio and the uh, parent to total ratio at time t, I can, lambda is a constant, I, I can calculate the age t for, by considering this equation as an equation of a straight line, y is equal to b plus mx, whereas this y intercept over here is b slope of the curve is m so over here in this particular equation equation number one y intercept is the daughter ratio 87 strontium y value is 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio y intercept is the initial daughter ratio then parent to daughter ratio will be the x axis and the slope of the curve m it will be equal to e raised to lambda t minus 1. Whereas lambda is a constant, I can simply easily calculate the age t from the slope of the curve. So this is what is called as isochrome technique. By plotting a curve, by plotting a curve, and y axis is 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio x axis is 87 rubidium by 86 strontium ratio and 
will get a straight line. The y intercept of this straight line is 87 strontium by 86 strontium of the initial value. The slope of this straight line is t e raised to lambda t minus 1 by that is the slope. This by using this particular method calculating the uh, age of the sample that is what is called as the isochrone technique of dating uh, isochrone technique of dating now over here uh, symbol if what we assume is that for co-genetic sample for co-genetic sample this initial 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio should be the same for all the co-genetic samples 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio should be the same. Why? Because whenever we discuss, whenever uh, we discuss about the isotopes during the magmatic temperature, isotopes are same elements, right? They are, th their fractionation is not based on their chemical property. Isotope fractionation is only possible on the basis of their mass. Other than that, isotope 18 oxygen and 16 oxygen, both of them are oxygen. We don't see any chemical variation over there, only their mass is different. So, on the basis of mass only, fractionation of isotopes are possible. Uh, so, but there is an issue with uh, uh, during magmatic temperature, during high, high temperature situation, isotope fractionation, even this mass fractionation is not possible. Mass fractionation will not happen. So, isotopes will be fractionating. To, uh, in whatever proportion uh, isotopes are present inside the magma, in the same proportion they will get crystallized into the mineral. So, they will get crystallized into the rock sample. So, this particular property of uh, isotope, uh, how an isotope fractionation happened during the, uh, during the magmatic temperature is very important. So, an isotope, especially heavier isotopes, Mass fractionation is not possible during the magmatic temperature. So, what will happen uh, uh, during the magmatic temperature? In whatever proportion the isotopes are present in the magma, in the same proportion, they will be getting crystallized into the uh, rock sample. So, over here, when it comes to the rubidium strontium system, uh, when it comes to the rubidium strontium system, 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio. If uh, my I have three different samples uh, with me, and imagine I have three different samples A, B, and C. These are three different uh, mineral samples that I had uh, that 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 I have collected from the field. Three different uh, sample of minerals, the so three different sample of rocks that I have collected from the field is over here A, B, C. And if I assume that all these three rock samples or all these three uh, mineral samples are co-genetic, that means they form during the exact same time. They form during the exact same time. In that particular case, all three of them will have same 87 strontium to 86 strontium initial ratio. All of them should have same in whatever proportion, if this is the magma, if 87 strontium content was 6 atoms of 87 strontium and 86 strontium was 3 atoms. So, this 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio is 6 by 3, that is 2, 2 or 2 by 1. This is the ratio of 87 strontium to 86 strontium ratio in the magma. In the same ratio, you will get initially during crystallization. 87 and 86 strontium will get inside in the same ratio in all these samples. Whereas when, it, when I think about the rubidium and strontium, rubidium by strontium ratio, 87 rubidium by 86 rubidium uh, ratio, this will be different for different mineral or different sample. A rubidium and strontium, both of them are entirely different minerals. Sorry, entirely different elements. Their chemical properties are different. They are uh, compatibility and incompatibility is different. Rubidium has affinity towards potassium. Strontium has affinity towards uh, similarities with calcium. So, they are entirely different from each other. So, what happens if this A is uh, K feldspar mineral, 
then more amount of rubidium will be here or rubidium by uh, strontium ratio will be much higher for example 4 by 1 this will be the rubidium by strontium ratio if b is uh, a plagioclase plagioclase means it is consisting of calcium so it uh, it is uh, there will be more amount of strontium present over here so instead of uh, 4 by 1 this will be 1 by 4 so rubidium by strontium ratio completely depends upon the uh, whether the mineral or whether the rock sample has an affinity towards rubidium or not or whether it has an affinity towards strontium or not it depends upon their fractionation chemical fractionation okay that's the term chemical fractionation chemical fractionation is what happens between rubidium and strontium Whereas when it comes to strontium, it is 7 to 86 ratio. There is each mass fractionation is also not there. Chemical fractionation is also not there. So in whatever percentage or ratio uh, isotopes are present in the magma, in the same percentage it will get, get incorporated inside the crystals. So uh, uh, incorporate inside the minerals. Now, so that's why for every sample. Initially, the initial, if they are co-genetic, provided they are co-genetic, then their 87 strontium by 86 strontium initial value will be the same. So, if I plot again, y axis is 87 strontium by 86 strontium ratio, z axis is, sorry, x axis is 87 rubidium by 86 strontium ratio. So, I have three different samples of there, A, B and C. A, B, C samples. Three of them are co-genetic. Co-genetic sample or co-mathematic sample. In this particular case, when they are co-genetic or co-mathematic, if at, at, during the time of formation, at time T0, during the time of formation, time T0, that is equally T0 equal to 0. Time T0, when if I... Plot the values, everyone will have same this is the A, B, and C. A has less amount of rubidium by strontium ratio of A is lesser, B is uh, higher than that. Then uh, uh, more than that is of C. So, uh, but initial value 87 strontium by 86 strontium, initial ratio is the same. This is the initial ratio. Now, what will happen? So, the uh, slope is uh, 0 because that is the T0 is equal to 0, uh, initial time of formation. Hence, it is a horizontal line parallel to the x axis. And for different time, the rubidium value will be different depending upon the mineral's property. Now, after some time, at, at T1, after something 3 billion years, we know that whatever rubidium that was present in A will get converted to, will, will start DK to strontium 87. All the rubidiums that is present in A, B and C, they will start uh, decay to strontium. So, with time, rubidium to strontium ratio will decrease and strontium 87 to 86 ratio will keep on increase. Why rubidium to strontium ratio is decreasing? Because with time, rubidium will keep on undergo decay and it will be forming strontium. So, this particular value will decrease. So, A will be over here. A will come over here, this particular way, B will reach at this particular point, C will reach over here or this is the, initially this was the at T0, this was the rubidium by strontium ratio, now at T, this is the rubidium by strontium ratio. There is a decrease in the rubidium to strontium ratio happened. Uh, at T0, this is the strontium ratio, at T, this is the strontium ratio. So, strontium ratio will keep on increasing for A, B and C. If you see, rubidium by strontium ratio will decrease. Uh, strontium 87 to 86 ratio is increasing. So, what is happening over here with time and the slope is also increasing the curve. If I draw a best fitting curve like this, 
is the slope of this curve I can use to calculate the age. Age of the sample can be calculated by looking at the slope of the curve. So over here, this slope will give the time. Age value will be calculated by looking at the time. So actually, uh, practically what we do is, uh, in the same picture, what we have a few samples from the field. For example, A, B, C, D are the some uh, rock samples that we got from the field. We don't know the age, nothing, but we are assuming that they are co-genetic. They are co-genetic samples. And then if I plot the values, they are coming like this, kind of whatever, A, B, C, D, E, F. These are the samples. And now, what we'll we do, we'll draw a best fitting curve. A best fitting straight line will be drawn. And by if any, any process, you can either choose a regression method or any statistical method can be used to, calc to draw the straight line A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, what I do, our this intercept, Y intercept will give my uh, initial ratio of strontium. When I when I extrapolated this uh, the uh, when I join all these points and I extrapolated it into the y axis, this point will give you the y intercept. Or that is the strontium 87 to 86 ratio, initial ratio of strontium. And if I calculate the slope of this curve, that is e raised to lambda t minus one. Lambda is a constant for uh, uh, a. We know the lambda for medium strontium system, and we can calculate the age of the sample can be done by looking at the slope of the curve. So this is actually what is called as the isochron method. So in isochron method, this is only applicable for a cogenetic system, a cogenetic sample. For a cogenetic sample only, this is a, this a method of calculating the age is possible. So I hope this is clear for everyone about the uh, isochron technique of calculating the age, or isochron technique of finding the age. So, if you have uh, any tough uh, understanding in my drawing, you can see over here, this is the sample A, B, C and C, three samples over here. This is the initial uh, rubidium value, rubidium by strontium ratios. Initial strontium by 86, 87 by 86 ratio will be same for all the three samples. With time, what happens? Uh, the uh, rubidium value will decrease, rubidium 87 by 86 ratio will decrease for sample, so sample has become A1 and the strontium 87 to 86 value will be increasing, strontium value will increase, uh, rubidium value will decrease, same goes with B also, if you look, this is the rubidium ratio will decrease and the strontium ratio will increase. So among these three samples, which one will have initial uh, like which one is more compatible to rubidium A, B and 3, C, which which mineral or which sample would uh, uh, was behaving as a more compatible uh, host or more compatible thing for rubidium. Obviously it will be C. That's why initial rubidium by strontium ratio is highest for C. Okay and more amount of strontium has formed in C because you can see this is for A1 value and this is the strontium ratio for B1 and this is the uh, C, uh, strontium ratio for C1. So C1 has more amount of strontium because more amount of rubidium was present over here. That is what is shown, that is what is defined in the theory of, theory of radioactive decay. Uh, the rate of decay is actually proportional to the number of parent. If more number of rubidium is there, more the rate of decay will be higher more number of strontium will be forming. So, this is all about the isochron uh, system of uh, dating uh, rubidium strontium isochron technique. I hope it was uh, clear for everyone. If you guys have any doubt, you can ask, uh, ask me or uh, you guys can chat over here in the chat option uh, or we'll uh, meet uh, with another live section. 
a simple this is actually very important for net examination and for dsi they don't ask much question from these sections in gate but it is important for net and gsi upsc papers so this is all about today's live let's uh, meet with another live section thank you